right, people, welcome back. We're talking about strain today. It's the next section of the book. All right, let me write it on the board. Hey, welcome back, friends. Today we're talking about strain and an introduction to Poisson's ratio. So let's start talking about strain. We're going to talk about strain primarily today, okay? We have some new equations on our equation sheet that we've been adding up over here as we go along our videos. And here is strain. So what is strain? We know what stress is. Stress is like an in, the, the intensity of a force, how intense it is on a, on a, on a certain area, right? Strain is just deformation. As I pull on something, it elongates, it gets longer, it stretches, right? That's strain. Um, and so there's an equation for strain. Strain is given with the Greek letter epsilon, okay? My students call it circle E. I don't, you know, come on, circle E. There you go, there's circle E. And epsilon is, <clears throat> is the, is the, length of something, the new length, like the stretched length, minus the length original divided by original by length original. Okay? So take the new length, take the overall length that the thing is stretched after you put a little force on it, right? I take this Take this beam and I start stretching it, uh, and it's getting longer, right? Okay, so take the original length before I pulled on it, and then take the length of it after I stretch it. So subtract the original length from the new length. That leaves me the change in length, the delta L, and then divide that by the original length. Now, the units on this are a little weird, not too weird, in that... Length is in inches, and this is in inches, or well, or meters and meters if you're a metric guy, right? So the, the units for strain are in inches per inch, or meters per meter, or millimeter per millimeter, right? Now those really cancel out, so you could think of it as kind of a unitless um, thing. But let's say I had something like this, a rubber band, okay? So this is my beam, let's say, okay? So as I start putting a force on this beam, it starts to stretch. Now that's about as far as I want to stretch that, right? So if I measured that new length and divided that by, or that, you know, subtracted the original length and then divided it by the original length, I would have strain. Now, inches per inch, what does that mean? Well, look how, how many inches of this rubber band do I have? Let's say that's, uh, I don't know, looks like about seven inches, right? Then when I stretch it, that looks like about 20 inches, 20, let's say 21 inches, right? It got three times longer. So for every inch of rubber band, it stretched three inches long, right? That's inches per inch. So what if, what if I have more inches of rubber band? What's going to happen? Let me, uh, let me just make this rubber band longer, okay? Now, the rubber band is is that long unstretched, okay? It's twice as long, it's 14 inches long now. So how long is this gonna be able to stretch now? Right, and inches per inch, ooh, that's about as far as, well, right there is about as far as I'm gonna go. I bet you that's about 42 inches, right? So I had more inches of rubber band, so if each inch stretches so many inches, right, the more inches of it you have, the more stretch you get. And that's what that kind of means when you say inches per inch, it's like, how many inches does it stretch for each inch of material that you have, or each millimeter of material that you have, or each meter of material that you have? So that is deformation. It is strain, okay? 
And this, of course, is axial. There is some other kind of strain we're going to talk about, but most of the deformation is going to be axial. Now, another, another thing that you'll see here um, when you're talking about strain problems is this guy down here, which is Poisson's ratio, okay? And Poisson's ratio, I like to think of it as the Stay Puff Marshmallow Rule. Here, let me, uh, I've got a little piece of stretchy material here, okay? So I've got a little square of stretchy material. If I elongate this material, what's going to happen? So watch the width of the material. As I start to stretch the material, what happens to the width of the material? Okay? It reduces, doesn't it? It goes from that wide to this wide. So, and that's what's called Poisson's ratio. So as I stretch something, it gets narrower. As I compress something, it's going to get wider. I like to think of it as the Stay Puff Marshmallow Rule, right? If you had a big, giant, fat marshmallow and you squeeze that marshmallow, what's going to happen to it? Right? It's going to get bigger on the diameter. The ratio of how much it shrinks laterally or longitudinally to laterally is Poisson's ratio. Okay? And here's the equation for that. So Poisson's ratio is strain lateral divided by strain longitudinal. So longitudinal would be along the axis, right? And so lateral would be that cross um, dimension there. Okay, so why is, it, why is it negative? Why is there a negative there? Okay, so imagine my little piece of material. Where's my little piece of material? Here it is, right here, okay? It, my little piece of material, okay? So as I stretch it, you know, axially, longitudinally, that dimension is getting bigger. That's a positive sign. But what's happening in the lateral direction? It's getting narrower. That's a negative, isn't it? It's shrinking in dimension. So that negative sign right there, So because a positive divided by a negative, right, gives you a negative. And then what does this negative do? It flips it back to a positive. And same thing. If I compress it, right, if I compress it, the, the longitudinal is getting smaller. But the laterals getting bigger, so there's always one of them's always negative, one of them's always positive, and that negative sign flips it back so that Poisson's ratio is always a positive number. So Poisson, Poisson's ratios between zero and um, 0.5. Um, can you think of a material that, as you compress it, maybe doesn't grow like like we're talking about? Mm, how about something like cork, right? A lot of air is entrained in cork, so as I compress that, those, those pockets of air will compress, right? But it won't necessarily grow in the diameter. But something like rubber, you know, if, as I comp if I compress it an inch, it gets bigger, almost an inch, right? So that's kind of the spectrum between different materials. Aluminum is like 0.29 for Poisson's ratio. Steel, 0.27 to 0.30, depending on which flavor of steel you're talking about. And so... Poisson's ratio, again, that's what we're talking about today, as I stretch something, right, it gets smaller in diameter. Because you think of it, there's only so many molecules in there, right? And if I make that thing longer, those molecules got to come from somewhere. Where do they come from? From the radius, right? They, you know, they're, they're all changing places, aren't they? So that's Poisson's ratio. I'm not going to work that in our problem today, but we'll have a problem, a, a sample problem on Poisson's ratio, not to worry. But now it's very closely tied with strain, with deformation, okay? So now you understand what Poisson's ratio is. It's the Stay Puff Marshmallow rule, rule, man. And you know Poisson, Poisson is French for fish, you know. He was a French guy. He had a curly mustache and he went, ha, ha, ha. Because, oh, that's, I'm sorry. I apologize, French people. Okay, here we go. Next, let's work this little low sample problem here. Let me erase my board and work this. All right, for this problem, they say a flexible cable AB. That's here. Now, flexible just means that it'll stretch, right? Is attached to a rigid bar, BC. Here's the rigid bar. The word rigid means it's magic. It doesn't bend. It doesn't deflect. Really, all bars bend and deflect, but in, in solids, sometimes we'll have magic rigid ones, okay? And a load P is applied here. Um... And the bar displaces five degrees. So the dash line is how far that it goes over so it moves five degrees. Find the normal strain. Normal strain. What does normal mean? 
Remember, that's like along the axis, right? In the wire AB. Okay. Well, let's, um, wait a second. Let's do the before. Let's do before because we got to have the original link, don't we? The before is here. Hey, look here, look here. What's 300 times 2? Uh, what's 400 times 2? Uh, so what's 500? That's a 345, isn't it? This is a thousand. All right? You got to be looking for those three, four, fives. You're in a test. You're trying to go fast. Most of these problems are set up where the angles are pretty easy. But, you know, so you need to be able to recognize that. It'll save you a little bit of time, maybe a couple of minutes. So you can work on the next problem, right? Okay, so the original length, L naught, is equal to 1,000 millimeters. So how long is the cable once it gets stretched. Let's draw it, shall we? Okay, so here he is, the uh, bar, okay? And uh, this guy is a rigid bar, so even though it moves five degrees, it's still 800 millimeters long, isn't it? Okay, how about this? The distance between these two points down here, A and C, does that change? Well, no. So that's still 600. And then here's the new string, AB, right? Here's a AB. And what else do we know? This angle right here used to be 90 degrees, but now it's 95 degrees, isn't it? Okay. That's why it's always so hot in the corners. Did you ever notice that in your house, the corners in your house? Because it's, it's 90 degrees. <laughs> okay, never mind. All right. Here we go. So we want to know what is that length right there? You know what that looks like to me? The law of cosines. Law of cosines. Ready? Um, and it goes like this. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of C. Okay? So we got side, angle, side. That's what tells me I need to do this, right? And I'm looking for C. So let's see, that's going to equal 600 squared plus 800 squared minus 2 times 600 times 800 times the cosine of 95 degrees. And don't forget, we got to square root this whole thing to get C, right? So C is equal to, here we go. All right, let's see. Clear, 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 clear. Okay, 600 squared plus 800 squared plus 1,200 times 800 times the cosine of 95 equals, that's a big number, but we got to square root that, don't we? So C equals, no, I got 957, that can't be right, is it? Let's try that again. 600 squared plus 800 squared minus 1200 times 800 times the cosine of 95. And then square root of that. 1,041. Okay? So this guy is 1,041 millimeters. All right? So, there's our equation, our delta L. Well, he started off at 1,000. Now how big is he? He's 1,041. So he grew the delta L. Delta L is equal to 41 millimeters, isn't it? So the normal strain in AB is equal to 41 divided by 1,000. That's going to move my decimal over three places. So 0 0.041, right? Let me do that right. 41 divided by, zip, zip, zip. yep, millimeters per millimeter. Okay? So that's the strain at for AB. 
Now, that's, so that's every millimeter is going to stretch is going to stretch 0.041. Now, every millimeter, millimeter is really little, isn't it? So you're talking about really small numbers here. You're going to have times 10 to the negative six maybe on these. So the, expect really small numbers for these strain numbers, right? Because steel stretches, but it doesn't stretch like like my little stretchy material did, right? It doesn't stretch like a rubber band. It just stretches a little bit, right? So these are going to be really small numbers. Um, for strain, so you can expect that. So there's a good little introduction to strain problems and a little introduction to what the heck is Poisson's ratio. Now you know physically what Poisson's ratio is, what it means, and now when you come to the next problem, we'll know how to use it. So I'll see you on the next problem.